The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. You'll excuse me, my microphone is a little bit loose, and I know it's not for you. Y'all can hear me fine even without it. It's for the people online. Comfort, comfort ye my people. Speak ye peace, thus saith our God. Comfort those who sit in darkness, mourning neath their sorrows load. Speak ye to Jerusalem of the peace that waits for them. Tell her that her sins I cover, and her warfare now is over. Yea, her sins our God will pardon, blotting out each dark misdeed. All that well deserved his anger, he no more will see or heed. She hath suffered many a day. Now her griefs have passed away. God will change her pining sadness into ever-springing gladness. If these words sound familiar to you, Perhaps it is because you sang them this past Sunday. It is, of course, the first two stanzas of hymn 347. You might also recall the pastor spoke to you about how peace is defined and where it is truly found. Today, we look at comfort that comes from that peace. Blessed Advent to you. Christmas will come soon enough, but for today, for tonight, we are in the second midweek of Advent. Tonight, we are looking at what some is sometimes referred to as the Gospel of Isaiah. It is here that the prophet speaks to us about the true nature of comfort, which, as we all know, comes only through peace and in Christ Jesus. We know that we are all sinners who rightly deserve God's wrath and punishment. Regardless of if we want to admit it or not, God's law is written on all of our hearts. This is a hard reality that will always challenge our comfort here on earth. But God has planned for that hard reality. He brings you sustainable and real comfort through his son, Jesus Christ. Even amid the drama of life, Isaiah tells us that much here tonight. Without God, we seek all sorts of methods to find comfort for ourselves. We even go as far as justifying our sins and indeed celebrating them while demanding that others accept us as we are. All efforts to seek comfort and ease of our conscience fall short. While it might bring a satisfying and enjoyable experience for a time, it is not the lasting comfort that God desires for you. That comfort has already been delivered to you through your baptism and is found here in this house. God invites you to receive that comfort right here and right now. Pastor said to you last Sunday, peace be with you. Tonight I say to you, comfort be with you. The words of Isaiah that we read tonight were God's own words to, for his people in a time where they were separated from him by their sins and rebellion, leading to his righteous judgment and their destruction. After all, separation from God equals death. So where is the comfort here? And are these words for us as well? 
When Isaiah speaks this prophecy of hope and comfort, he says of Jerusalem, Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. This term Jerusalem is a figure of speech used by God when he he speaks to his chosen people, you and I included. Also consider that the church is the bride of Christ. And this is why we see the she and the her. God is telling his prophet to proclaim comfort to his chosen people. So it is not a stretch for me to say that we are included. Rightly speaking, the church is the true Israel. And we are therefore connected to this prophecy and thus recipients of the message and the promises as well. Isaiah's message came to the people of Judah and Jerusalem about a hundred years before God's judgment came in the form of Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonian army, which destroyed the southern kingdom and sent the people into exile. They had to endure the discomfort of God's wrath for almost 600 more years before God's true comfort came to the world in the form of a baby born of a virgin and proclaimed by angelic proclamation this long-awaited comfort which God promised required faith. Much like God's people today, at, much like God's people of that time, we don't know what the future holds for this world, for our nation, or even for our own lives. As their faith comforted them in the promise of his first advent, our faith in the promise of Jesus' second advent comforts us today. Also like them, we have the promise that the victory is won by God, that our sins are forgiven. And since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We live by faith and not by sight. And just like the people of Judah, we still sin. The world continues to decay. News of wars and rumors of wars continue to plague this world today. Political corruption, moral decay, and social discord still block honest discourse. We continue to be offended when others challenge our self-made identity. But Christ is faithful in our faithlessness. He will not deny himself. Your war with him is over. He has declared peace with you and made atonement for your sins, not because of your own righteousness, but because of his. Hundreds of years after the Babylonian captivity had ended and Judah and Jerusalem were restored, would come a voice of one crying in the wilderness, preparing the way for the Lord, a call of repentance to make straight the path and prepare God's people to receive God's grace and the forgiveness of our sins through the work of his son. This call for repentance is also for you today. Jesus did not come to be a political Messiah or even a temporary Messiah. He is the true Messiah. He is our eternal king and savior of the world. 
He brings comfort and true peace of conscience, even in the middle of social unrest or absence of certainty of tomorrow. He brings comfort to his people, the church, through his death on the cross as the atonement for your sins and mine. The only identity that matters now is the one that you were given in your baptism when you received the sign of the cross on your head and on your heart, marking you as one redeemed by Christ crucified and bringing you into his family in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This is true comfort. God has declared by his word that your sins are forgiven, and you have been declared righteous for his sake by Jesus' grace and through his faith freely given to you as a gift. The grass withers and the flowers fade. Even our own flesh fails us. But God's word stands forever. And this, my friends in Christ, is the true comfort that is brought to you tonight and indeed every day. In the name of Jesus, amen.